Okay, I just want to uh, quickly show you some pictures. I think you've seen these all, or seen pictures like this before. Uh, so we were talking about sets last time, um, and I was showing you how to do the set union, set intersection, and set difference um, using Java sets. Um, so these are Venn diagrams. I'm reasonably sure you've seen these before at some point in your life. Um, if, I've got two sets here shown as circles, overlapping circles in this case. Right? If you want the union of these two things, then it's just everything that's inside both sets. Right? So it's the stuff shown in red. Uh, you want the, uh, if the intersection of these two sets, it's just the elements that are common. Right? So it's the part that overlaps. Right? And the difference, uh, which is one you might not have seen before, because it's not, it's not often covered in high school. Um, the difference, so you can do it two ways. You can do, uh, in this case, I'm going to do the difference of the first set, so the one on the left. Uh, with the uh, second set, so the one on the right, right? So the difference includes all the elements that are in the first set, but not in the second, right? So that's that chunk of the set there, right? And if you want to draw these pictures for the examples from the last uh, class, you can do that, and you'll see that this is, in fact, uh, that these will, in fact, uh, give you the right answer. Okay. Uh, now, the big reason for talking about sets in Java, well, one of the big reasons is because you need to know how to use a set if you want to use a map. And maps are very useful um, in programming problems. Right? So you know a map as a dictionary, right? Uh, from Python. Right? So map, dictionary, and associative array, they're all names for the same thing. Right? So they're all names for the same abstract data type. Uh, now, what's an abstract data type? So an abstract data type, well, a data type is just a type. Right? So we know what a type is, right? A type's a set of values. It's what you can do with those values. Okay. An abstract data type is a formal specification of a type. So by formal, I mean it's a mathematical description of a type. Um, it's, we don't normally teach you the mathematical specification in undergrad anymore. Uh, but many years ago, it was very common that you would be taught uh, how to specify what a list is mathematically. Um, it's pretty awkward to do. Well, it's a little awkward. It's, it's a little weird. But anyway, you can specify these mathematically. Um, so an abstract data type is a mathematical or formal specification of a type. Right? Now, because it's a mathematical description of a type, right, that means that you can have many different implementations of that type. Right? So you can cook up many different ways to implement a list, for example. Right? And the different implementations, they have different disadvantages uh, and advantages. Right? So now you can produce many types of lists or many types of sets and then choose between the one that's most appropriate for your application. Excuse me, for your application. Right? Uh, sets and lists, there are also abstract data types. And there's many abstract data types. Right? There's a whole course, SIS-235 is an entire course that talks about data structures. Right? Uh, so a data structure is just an, is just an implementation of an abstract data type uh, that's designed for Information storage, retrieval, and manipulation. Right? So lists, sets, maps, they're all examples of data structures. Towards the end of the course, uh, we actually implement fully generic lists, um, uh, lists in course. Right? So you see exactly how you do this in Java. OK, so back to maps. Um, so like I said, a map in Java is basically the analog of a Python dictionary. Syntax, of course, is different because they're different programming languages. Right? Um, unlike, uh, unlike the standard Python map, right, um, Java allows you to pick between different kinds of maps. Uh, although you can actually pick between different kinds of maps in Python as well. Right? You just have to know that they exist. So there's two main kinds. Right? There's something called a hash map. Right? Now remember we had a hash set. Right? So you shouldn't be surprised that a hash map is pretty similar to a hash set. Uh, so a hash map um, is the one that's most similar to a Python dictionary. Right, for versions of Python that are less than 3.7. Uh, Python changed at version 3.7. Um, and I'll explain exactly what a hash map does in a second. Tree map, right, so that's a uh, map or a dictionary that sorts its keys. Right, so that's a sorted map, just like a tree set's a sorted set. Right? And then there's a third uh, kind of map that's often useful called the linked hash map. Right? And that's the, similar to a linked hash set. Right? So when you put things into a linked hash map, right, when you iterate over the elements in the map, you get them back out in the order that you put them in. 
And that's how a Python dictionary works um, after version 3.7. Right, so there was a fairly big change to how Python maps worked, uh, Python dictionaries worked in, in version 3.7. Okay. So a map models a group of elements that are accessed by keys. Right? So a list is a, you can think of a list as being a map, right? Where the keys are the integer indexes, right? So a list, you can get an element by its index, right? So a map generalizes a list in that the indexes are no longer integer numbers. Right? There's some other value. And in Java, they can be any reference value. Right? There are some restrictions on what, on, what you can, uh, on what types of keys you can put into a map, though. Right? So they have to be unique. Right? So for a list, you know that the indexes are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Right? There's no two elements that have the same index in a, in a list. Same is true in a map. Right? No two elements in a map have the same key. Every key maps exactly to one value. Right? But you can have multiple keys mapped to the same value. Right? So in other words, the values form some kind of collection that's not necessarily a set. Right? But the keys, they are a set. Right? And Java actually uses hash set and hash, sorry, hash set and tree set to implement hash map and tree map. Right? Um, well, I'll leave it at that. That's actually not accurate, but uh, it's actually the, opposite, the other way around, which is kind of funny. Uh, a pair, so a key and its associated value, that's called an entry, right? Um, now, that's all great, but it's much easier to think of a map as just being a table, right? So a map is just a two-column table. Elements in the first column are unique and not necessarily sorted, right? The entries are just the rows of the table, and that's it, right? So, uh, so there's a bunch of different ways. Oh, here, let me show you an example first. There is an example of a map, right? For my keys, I've got the months, right? The names of the months, those are all unique, right? There's only 12. Uh, the value um, are just the number of days in each month, right? So you've got a two column table where you map the month name to the number of days. And there's many examples of maps that are used in real life, right? Any mathematical function is a map, right? That is a, that's the actual name for a function, right? If you look it up on Wikipedia, it says it's a map. Right? So it maps a value x to some value y. A dictionary you can think of as being a map. Right? It maps a word um, to one or more definitions of the word. Right? Uh, number of days per month, that's you map the month to the number of days. Right? Provincial slash territorial capitals, you map the province or territory to some capital city. Right? Book index, so an index in a book, you have a keyword that maps to a number of pages. Right, to a set of pages in this case. Right. Student marks in a course. Right. So when, um, when you make a spreadsheet, you're essentially making a map of some kind. Right. So if I have student marks in a course, I would map your student number to a list of marks. Right. Notice that the, the values are getting more complicated as we go down the list. Right. Here I just have a number, a number, a string. Now I have a set. Now I have a list. You can even have another map as a value in the map. Right? So if I have your student marks in a course, then I'm going to use your student number. Right? And then I might have another map in, uh, that maps to your student number, where the other map maps names of the marked items. So assignment one, assignment two, assignment three, midterm, exam. Right? And I keep each one of your marks um, in that map. Right? So you can, uh, there's no restrictions on the values. Right? You can put in very complicated things in, into the value column. Okay, so if you want to make a map, you need to pick a class that implements the map interface. And I'll tell you what an interface is in just a minute. Uh, well, in a little bit. Okay, now normally you choose a hash map, right? So if you don't know anything about your problem other than that you need a map, then normally you pick hash map, right? Why do you pick hash map? Because it's built using, a, well, it's sort of built using a hash set, right? What can a hash set do? A hash set can do get, it can, you can add an element to a hash set, and you can ask a hash set, does it contain some element in O1 time? Right? Constant time, uh, get puts and contains key. And I'll explain what put does in a minute. Right? Now, the problem with a hash map, well, it's not really a problem. It's one of the disadvantages of, the map, uh, of a hash map is that you don't know the order. So if you iterate over the keys of, this, of the map, um, there's no fixed iteration order. Right? 
So it's not alphabetic. Um, it's not exactly random, um, but it looks kind of random. Right? Uh, furthermore, if you put stuff in the map or take things out, then the iteration order can change. Right? So that's a little weird. So you can't rely on the iteration order. Now, your other common choice is a tree map. So you use a tree map when you know that you want to sort your keys. Right? It's similar to a tree set right? in that you can get something from the set. Sorry, you can ask if the set contains something. You can add something to the set in O log n time. Right? Uh, log n is fast, um, but it's not as fast as O1. Right? So tree maps are slightly slower than hash maps in practice. Uh, the keys, though, they're ordered, right? So they are sorted. Um, but that means whatever key you use has to be sortable, right? So you can use strings as your keys or integers or doubles, right? Because those are all sortable values, right? Um, but some other objects that you might want to use as uh, keys, uh, you may not be able to do it without doing a little bit, at, uh, a little bit more extra work, right? And finally, uh, if you, you may want to use a linked hash map. So that's when you want the speed of a hash map. Uh, but you also want some sort of fixed iteration order, right? So the keys in a linked hash map are maintained in insertion order, right? The order that you put things into the map is the same. Uh, when you iterate over the keys, then the order is the order that you put the keys into the map, right? So it's also O1, but it's slightly slower than hash map, very slightly slower than hash map. Uh, the big problem with linked hash map is that it uses more memory. Right? So it, uh, for every, it uses um, additional memory that's proportional to the number of elements in the map. And so if you have a really huge map, um, you end up with roughly twice the storage requirement as a, as a plain hash map. OK, so you make a map. So you pick your type of map that you want to use. So here I want to use a tree map. Right? You have to say what the key type is and what the element type is. Right? So for the, this table, uh, not that table, this table here. Right? So for that table there, the keys are strings uh, and the values are strings um, for our purposes, right? Because they're just the names of the provinces and, and the cities. Right? So I want a map that maps strings to strings or provinces to capital cities. Right? You make a new tree map and then you use put to put elements into the map. Right? So how does it work? You specify the key, and you specify the value, and that's it. Right? That's all you do. Now, this is a tree map, so it doesn't matter what order you put stuff in. When you actually go to print the map, you get something that resembles this. It's not exactly, it doesn't look exactly like this, but you'll get the keys in sorted order. Right? And hopefully, I sorted that correctly. Right? Right? So that's put. Let's put, th put entries into the map. Uh, now, often you'll want to ask the map for a certain value, right? So to get a value from the map, uh, you need to provide a key, right? So the key is used to access and to uh, modify elements in the map, right? So the map uses the key to find the value associated with the key, right? That's why it's called an, associated, uh, an associative array, right? So to get, the, uh, to get the city, the capital city for the province of Ontario, right? You ask the map to get the value associated with the key Ontario. Yeah? Uh, no. So, well, it sorts using the default string sorting. So, the default string sorting is alphabetical. But you can change that. So, you can supply an object that tells it how to sort in a different way. Yeah. Uh, right. And so, that returns, um, in this case, it returns a string, right? Because the values in our maps are strings. Right. Get and put. OK, now, sometimes you want to check is a key in the map. Right? And so there's this handy contains key method. Right? So here are the capitals. That's the same map that we were working with before. Right? Um, if you were paying attention, you'll notice that I left out all of the territories. Right? So now I want to check right? um, is Nunavut, right? is, the, is the territory Nunavut in the map as a key? Right? So in, if it's not in the map, then I'm going to add uh, Nunavut and its capital to the map. Right? I'm going to do the same thing with the Northwest Territories. Right? Uh, does the map contain the key Northwest Territories? And then not in front. Right? So does it not contain the key Northwest Territories? Right? If so, 
go ahead and put the uh, yellow knife in for the, pro for, the, uh, for the capital city of the Northwest Territories. Right? And then the same thing for Yukon. OK, so um, one of the things you, there's a common problem that we often throw at uh, people be, uh, who are learning Java. Right? So we give you a big file that has a bunch of strings in it. Right? We ask you to read the file. And then we ask you, how many times does each word in, the, in that file appear um, in the file? Right? So how many times does the word A appear, or how many times does the word the appear, or things like that? Right? And you might want to know, well, why, do you, why would you want to do this? Right? Well, one of the reasons why is because you might want to know what the most commonly occurring string is. Right? Or you might want to know what is the least commonly occurring string. Right? Or you might want to know what are the 10 most common um, strings, and so on and so on. Right? In real life, who would want to do that? Well, anybody that works with text. Right? So like Google or Facebook or somebody like that. Right? Google might want to know what are the most common searches um, that are currently happening. Right? Uh, who else? Like places like Facebook might want to know who's the most common user that searched for or something like that. Right? OK, so you can use a map to, do, to solve this problem. Right? So what you need to do is you need to figure out what are the unique words that are in the list or that are in the file, right? So find the unique words that are in the file and then count the number of times each word appears, right? So I'm going to build a map, right? The keys of the map are the unique words, right? And the values are the number of times each word appears in the map, right? And so you do it like this, uh, something like this. Right? So I've, got, I've read my file into a list of strings, right? and I'm just going to loop over the list of strings. Right? So for each string s in t, right? I want to ask the map, do you contain this string s? Right? So remember, I need to, I'm, I'm looking for the, uh, unique, uh, the unique keys, right? uh, the unique words, right? the unique strings. So if it already contains the string in the map, right, then I know that this word has appeared more than once already. So let's deal with that in a second. If the map does not contain the key, then I know that I haven't seen this word yet. Right? So this is the first time this word's appeared. Right? So I simply put the word into the map with a count of one. Right? And that's it. All right, let's go back to the if part. So if the word is in the map, right, then you ask the map how many times does that word, has that word appeared so far. Right? So you just count get s. Right? That gives you back an int, uh, an integer in this case, because right? it's a map of integer. Int is OK here, though. If you want to write int n, that's fine, because Java will auto unbox the integer returned by get and stick it into the int. Right? And then you just add 1 to n and put it back into the map. Right? And then when you process all the words, you'll have, you'll have the set of unique words, right? because a map only allows unique keys. Right? And you'll have the number of times each word appears in the map. Uh, sorry, each, the number of times each word appears in the file. OK. So the keys, right? The keys are a set. So you can actually ask the map for its set of keys. Right? The way you do that is you just call key set. Right? And then the map will return you a, a set of keys. Right? So this is the count. That's the map from the previous slide. Right? I'm going to ask the map count for its key set. Right? And I'm going to store it in a variable called keys. Um, and what you should notice is the type that's in front here. Right? So my key set, let's go back and look at what, uh, I have a hash map back here. Right? So you kind of expect the set that belongs to a hash map to be a hash set. Right? But here I've written set. If you write hash set, it doesn't work. Because the key set method doesn't actually return a hash set. Right? So just remember that. So all key set says is that it returns a set of some kind. Right? And I'll get back to this in a couple of slides. Right? But once you have the set, right, you can just iterate over the elements of the set using a for each loop. Right? And now I can print out how many times each word has appeared. Right? So for each, key, uh, for each k key, sorry, for each key uh, k in the set of keys, right, I'm going to ask the map how many times does that key appear? Right? So in other words, how many times does that word appear in that list, uh, in that uh, file? Right? And then I'm going to print out that word appears that many times in, the, in T. 
right? So you just uh, iterate over the set of keys, um, and you can get information. You can get the the associated value for each key. Right now, sometimes you just want the values and you don't care about the keys, right? Um, so the map also has a collection of values, right? So for every key, there's a value associated with it, right? So you can ask the map, hey, what is your collection of values, right? And there's a method called values. You might expect the collection to be represented as a list, right? Um, but it's not, right? If you ask the map for its values, right? you have to store the answer in something that's called the collection, right? And I'll get to this in a second, too, right, on the next slide. Um, for now, though, you can think of a collection as being something like a list, right? It's some collection of values. Um, unlike a list, though, you can't index into a collection, right? It's just some collection. However, you can loop over the elements of the collection, right? So for each integer i in that collection of values, right, these are the number of times the words have appeared, right? I can count the total number of words that are in that file, right? So I'm just going to sum the number of times each word has appeared, and that gives me the total number of words um, that are in the file, right? So that's like counting the number of words in a file, right? If you want to know how many times, uh, so the reason I'm doing it in this case, I guess, is to compute the average occurrence, right? So on average, how many times does each word appear in the file, right? And so you can just divide by the size of the map, right? So you can do counts.keyset.size. Uh, yeah, or you can just do count.size. They're the same thing in this case. Right? So the size of a map is just the number of entries in the map. Right? The size of a set is just the number of entries in the set. So in this case, they're the same thing. OK. Now, what's going on with key set and values? Right? So the key set method doesn't say what kind of set is returned. Right? Even if you have a hash map, right, you don't know that it's a hash set that's returned. Even if you have a tree set, you don't know for sure that it's a tree set that's returned. Right? All that you know is that it's this thing called a set. Right? And similarly for the values. Right? You don't get back a list. You get back something called a collection. Right? If you try to write list or array list or linked list here, it doesn't work. Right? If you try to write tree set or hash set or some other set here, it doesn't work. Right? You have to write set and collection. Right? And so what are these things returning? They're both returning references to what's called an interface. Right? And it turns out interfaces are a really big feature of the Java standard library. Right? So what's an interface? OK, so in its most common form, right, a Java interface is a specification, right, but not an implementation of an API. Right? Uh, so the interface says what methods exist um, in a class, right? So they say what methods exist in a class, right? It says what the methods promise to do, right? So it specifies the methods and their behavior, but it doesn't say how those methods are implemented, right? In other words, there's no implementation in an interface. It's just a list of methods, right? And uh, contracts for those methods, right? So the uh, for example, there's something called the list interface that specifies uh, what methods every list must provide. Right? So when you use an array list method like size or get or set, right, all of those methods are specified in the list interface. Right? A class that implements the interface must provide an implementation of every method in the interface. Right? So array list implements the list interface. So what does that mean? That means ArrayList has to provide every method that the list interface says uh, must be in the class. Right? So this is the important part. It's a specification. It's not an implementation. Right? It only says that this method exists in this class, but it doesn't say how that class is going to implement that method. Right? Now, uh, the interesting thing about interfaces in Java is that they are also types. Right? So an interface is a type in Java, right? So you have primitive types, right? And you have reference types, right? So far, we've only seen classes as reference types, but interfaces are also reference types, right? Now, what does that mean? It means you can use them as a variable type, right? So I can write list string t equals new array list, right? 
Why? Because the array list class implements the list interface. Right? Um, so what that's saying, in Java what that means is an array list is a kind of list. Right? So this is actually a very important concept um, in object-oriented programming. Right? The type that's on the right-hand side uh, does not match exactly the type that's on the left-hand side. Right? They're different types. Right? List is not an array list. Right? But an array list is a list. Right? So the other way to think about this is that an array list object is substitutable for any other list object. Right? Anywhere I need a list, I can use an array list, or a linked list, or some other kind of list, as long as it implements the interface. Right? If I make a hash map, right, I can store a reference to that hash map in a map variable. Right? So a hash map is a kind of map. Right? But the opposite's not true. Right? A map is not a hash map. Right? Hash map is substitutable for map. Map is not substitutable for hash map. OK, now, the list sets and maps, these are all part of what's called the Java collection framework. Right? So this was a fairly large undertaking um, that was, that was un this was a fairly large undertaking that was performed, um, I don't remember in which version of the language, but it didn't start in the first version of the language. Right? The collections showed up later. So they were added to the language um, much later than uh, the language was created. Right? Much later than when the language was created. Right? So what does this framework consist of? Well, it's got a whole bunch of interfaces, right? like list, set, and map. Right? So these interfaces, they define what methods the various types of collections support. Right? What can you do with a list? What can you do with a set? What can you do with a map? Right? And then it provides a bunch of classes that implement the interfaces. Right? So they give you a hash map, they give you a tree map, they give you a hash set, they give you a tree set, they give you an array list, they give you a link list, and so on and so on and so forth. Right? And then they go even further. They give you a bunch of algorithms. Right? So they give you a bunch of methods that operate on the collections. Right? So they give you methods that sort a collection, or binary search a list, or um, other things like that. Right? So they give you a bunch of classes that have a bunch of methods that operate on the various types of collections. So if you were to draw like a large overview picture of what this, of what this um, collection hierarchy looks like, right, uh, you would end up with a picture that looks something like this. Right, so this is what's called a UML class diagram. So UML is Unified Modeling Language. Right? It's a visual language. Um, that lets you describe software. Uh, well, lets you describe object-oriented software. Okay, so this picture is trying to tell you something. Right? So let's start at the top. Right? So at the top it says there's this interface called collection. Right? And then there's this arrow pointing to collection. Right? And underneath that you've got a bunch of boxes, well, a bunch of other things that point to collection. Right? You've got this interface called set. You've got this interface called list. And you've got this interface called Q. Right? What that picture is trying to tell you is that the interfaces that I've outlined in red, right, those interfaces include all of the methods uh, that were in collection. Right? So these are what are called sub-interfaces. Right? So a set is a collection. Right? A list is a kind of collection. Q is a kind of collection. The opposite's not true. Right? A collection is not a set. A collection is not a list. A collection is not a Q. Right? So the, uh, the re relationship only goes one way. Right? You can kind of guess what this is. Right? You can kind of guess that that interface includes all of the methods that are in set. Right? So a sorted set is a set. Right? But it's not a list because there's no arrow pointing to list, right? And it's not a queue because there's no arrow pointing to queue, right? So because a sorted set is a set, it's also a collection, right? In other words, anything you can do with a collection, you can do with a sorted set, right? And you can kind of guess what, inter what class implements the sorted set interface, right? It's the tree set that implements this interface, right? Hash set implements the set interface. Okay, so uh, the 
so the interfaces are all organized in this hierarchy of uh, interfaces, right? Where interfaces that are lower in the hierarchy provide all of the uh, methods that are in interfaces that are higher in the hierarchy, right? As long as they're connected by an arrow of some kind. So the map is uh, special, right? So the map is not considered to be a collection, right? It's not considered to be one of these, right? Instead, it forms its own interface, right? And like sets, there's also a sorted map interface, right? So there's a sorted set interface, there's a sorted map interface, right? So the sorted map interface includes everything that's in the map interface. Right. And you might want to you might ask why well why is there this special sorted set and set and why is there this special sorted map as opposed to just a map, right? So if you can sort something if you know something sorted uh, there's a whole bunch of things you can do with that thing that you can't do with an unsorted collection, right? So for example in a sorted set, right? Suppose I have a sorted set of words of the alphabet, uh, words of the words in the English language sorry words in the English language, right? With a sorted set, you can ask for all the words that begin with the letter A, right? But you can't do that with an ordinary set, right? Because an ordinary set is unordered, so there's no efficient way to get all of the words that begin with the letter A, for example, right? But because the set's sorted, right, there is a way to get all of the words that begin with the letter A in an efficient manner, right? So as you work your way down the hierarchy, right, these interfaces start to add more methods. Right? So list adds a bunch of methods to the collection interface. Right? So there's a bunch of methods that the collection, uh, the, there's a bunch of things that a list can do that an ordinary collection can't do. Right? There are things that a sorted set can do that a regular set can't do. Right? And that's why there's this hierarchy. Okay, so what's a collection? So a collection is just a group of elements. Right? That's it. Right? So it's a group of objects Every object in the uh, collection is called an element, right? And so this is the most uh, general uh, interface for uh, a group of objects, right? There's nothing special about the ordering, right? There's no, there's no indexing into the element or anything like that, uh, indexing into the collection or anything like that, right? That's what a collection can do, right? So you can ask for the size of the collection, right? That sounds like it might be useful, right? How many elements are in this collection? You can ask, is the collection empty? Right? You can ask, is an element part of this collection? Right? Now, it's a collection of, of elements, so it might be nice if you can add an element to that collection, and it might be nice if you can remove an element from that collection. Right? But notice, not all collections uh, provide that functionality. Right? So those methods are optional. Right? Uh, I'm going to ignore iterator for now. If you're reading the notebooks, uh, you know what an iterator is. Uh, I'm going to leave it for now. Then there are what are called bulk operations. So this lets you do things with many elements, right? You can ask the collection, do you contain all of the elements in some other collection, right? You can ask the collection to add all the elements from another collection. You can ask the collection to remove everything from another collection, and so on and so forth, right? Uh, and then finally, there's these array operations. So you can turn a collection, uh, you, can, you, can, uh, you can get an array representation of a collection. Right? So what does a list add to that? Right? So what's the difference between a list and a plain old collection? Right? Well, a list lets you access an element by using an index. Right? So now there's this get method uh, that a list provides. Uh, similarly, there's a set method and a remove method that all operate by index, right? Those methods don't exist here, right? There's no set, there's no get, there's no remove by index, right? But you can do that with a list, right? You can search uh, a list and ask for the index of an element. Uh, that's for, uh, you can ask for the uh, index of the element, the location of the element using an, uh, via an index, right? Um, you can iterate over a list in a different way than you can iterate over an ordinary collection, right? In particular, you can go backwards and forwards in a list, right? And then finally, there are these things called range view, which you know as a slice in, in Python, right? So you can slice a list. Oops, sorry. Right? So in addition to everything that's in a collection, right? Now notice how Java expresses 
in addition to everything that's in a collection. Right? It's here at the top. Right? So at the top, it says that the list interface extends the collection interface. Right? So what it's trying to tell you is that, hey, everything that's in collection is also in list. Right? That's what extends collection means. Right? Uh, but then we're going to add all of these. Right, and we've talked about uh, many of these already, so I'm not going to go over each one of these uh, individually. Right, you can always look at the documentation for the list interface. Right, but it adds all of these additional methods. Right. So what's a set? Well, a set's just a collection that cannot contain duplicate elements. Right. Um, so it's trying to model the mathematical uh, uh, the math math mathematical notion of a set. Right? So you can do things like set, union, intersection, and difference. Right? Now, a set doesn't add any other methods. Right? It only includes methods inherited from collection. Right? But now it adds the restriction that you cannot put duplicate elements into the set. Right? So you can't put duplicate elements into the set. Right? But otherwise, um, that is what you can do with a set. Right? It's just what you can do with a collection. OK, well now what about the map interface? So the map interface doesn't extend collection, right? And if you go back and look at the collection interface, you can see why, right? So back in the collection interface, right, there's no notions of keys or values, right? All you can ask for is it, can you, does it contain some element? Can you, can you add some element? Can you remove some element, right? There's nothing about associating a key with a value or keys or values or anything like that. Right? And those are fundamental to how a map operates. Right? So map can't use this interface as its basis. Right? So instead, it defines its own. Right? So a map has, some has operations like put, get, and remove, right? where, you can, where, you all require, where all of the methods require a key. Right? Since uh, maps are oriented around keys and values, right? you can ask, does it contain a key? Does it contain a value? Right? Um, you can ask for its size. You can ask if it's empty, and so on and so forth. Right? But there's a bunch of other methods as well. So there's more here. Right? You can ask for its key set. Right? You can ask for its values. But you can also ask for every row of the table. Right? So in other words, you can ask it for its entry set. Right? So the entry set you can think of as just being every row of the table. Right? And there's an interface for the entries. Right? So when you get the entry set, you can ask the entry set, sorry, when you get an entry from the entry set, you can ask for its, uh, for its key, you can ask for its value, and you can change its value. Right? So in other words, I can pull a row out of the table, and I can ask what is the key in that row, I can ask what is the value in that row, and I can change the value that's in that row. Right? Uh, and so, uh, so that's what an interface is in Java, right? Interfaces are specifications of what a class can do without saying how the class does it, right? The important thing to remember is that the interfaces are types, right? So they are types, which means you can write code that only specifies the interface, right? right? So, I, so this lets you do things like write a method, right, that takes in a list, right? Not an array list, not a linked list, right? But a list. And what that means is the caller can call that method and provide whatever kind of list they will happen to have. Right? So you can call the method and give it a linked list. You can call the method and give it an array list, and everything works. Right? So this notion of substitutability uh, is a very, very powerful notion um, in, uh, in object-oriented programming. Right? You're going to see it again and again and again, uh, especially when we talk about uh, part three of the course. OK, that's it. So that's all I have for today. Any questions? Anybody? Super, we're done.